Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It is March the 12th and in today's Bible reading beginning in chapter 24 the Lord continues to outline various laws, in particular laws relating to marriage. Later the Lord gives instructions concerning the total destruction of the Amalekites. But first we see that if a man marries a young wife but later finds that there's nothing about her that pleases him because he's found in, in her to be impure, then he is allowed to write a certificate of divorcement to her and put it in her hand and send her out of his house. If she was actually found to be an adulterer, then she would be executed. After she is dismissed, she is free to go and marry another man. Now this is a blow to those who say that divorce is impossible. Clearly divorce was allowed in Old Testament times and in fact when the children of Israel returned from captivity the men were found to have married Gentile wives and so the whole nation divorced um, them all on the same day and took Jewish wives. What is interesting is that if she subsequently divorced again then she must never seek to be married to her former husband. Now, this would be an abomination to the Lord and it would defile the land. Next the Lord establishes that a newly married man is excused from war, nor is he required to do business, but he is to be free to enjoy the married life for a year. Then we see that no man is to, ta is to take the top or the bottom millstone as a token for a debt because uh, with it the family is fed. He is taking away a man's very life by removing his ability to make bread at home. No man is allowed to steal away any of his brethren to sell them as slaves. The punishment is death. The Lord warns Israel not to be complacent regarding leprosy but to do what the priests command. And when a man is borrowing from you, you are not to go to his house but you are to stand at a distance while he brings a pledge. The pledge might be his own blanket. This is not allowed to be taken from a poor man and not returned before the sun goes down. Sorry, it must be returned before the sun goes down. The hired man that is poor um, is not to be oppressed even if he's a stranger in the town or a stranger in Israel. Every day his hire is to be paid because he must return home to his family with a means to feed a hungry wife and the children. If the poor man cries to the Lord, the Lord will hear him and record this as a sin against the employer. Fathers will not be executed for their children and nor children for their father. Um, every person will die for only his own sin. Justice must be true and without bribery, especially for the stranger, the orphan and the widow, and no pledge may be taken from a widow ever. At harvest time a sheaf must be left for the poor stranger, widow or orphan, so if when you are collecting the sheaves in the field you accidentally leave one behind, then you are not to go back for it. You leave it for those that have no fields for those that have no support. When collecting olives, the trees may only be beaten once, while uh, what was not ripe and didn't fall is to be left for the poor. The same was true in the vineyard. Next, the Lord talks about the settlement of legal cases. If a man comes to law and is found to be guilty, then he can be beaten, but not with more than 40 stripes. Now, in the case of a scourge, a whip was used with three thongs and the prisoner had 13 beatings, which meant he had only 39 stripes, one less than what the law demanded. An ox was not allowed to be muzzled while treading out the corn. You see, the, lock, the ox is allowed to eat the fruit of its labor. Next, the Lord gives instructions regarding the preservation of the inheritance of the families of Israel. If a man dies without an heir, then his brother is to take her to wife and to have a son to the, uh, the, to the conservation of the inheritance in the family. The firstborn of her sons will inherit the land and the name of her dead husband will not be lost in Israel. Now this, of course, 
is what the story of the book of Ruth is all about. However, if the brother refused to marry her, then she will go to the elders of the city and relate the case. And then the elders of the city will call him and inquire of him. And if he still refuses, then he must remove his shoe and give it to her. And she will spit in his face and she will say, this is what is done to the man who will not build up his brother's house. That ungodly man will be referred to as the man whose house had his shoe loosed. And next the Lord says that in, that in a fight a woman must never grab a man by his privates. If she does, then her hand is to be cut off. No one is to pity her. Then the Lord gives instructions regarding deception and trickery. No one is allowed to have weights that are incorrect weights, either too heavy or too light, because these are a means of stealing. Those who do this are an abomination, and those who have just weights are promised a long life. Lastly, the Lord reminds Israel of the evil work of the Amalekites and the decrees that they are to be destroyed from off the face of the earth, and their evil must never be forgotten. Now, there were a few things that um, came to me as I was reading today and studying. Um, just one point, first of all, in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 2, when it's discussing about divorce, it says this, And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. So this is very clear. When a person is divorced, they are divorced with the um, purpose of freeing her um, to be um, able to be married to another man that is kind to her. So when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. Now there's a great deal of misunderstanding about divorce, not least because the King James Version is a little obscure in some New Testament passages, not so very clear. Um, and that the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church influenced the minds of the translators. However, the scripture is very clear that when she is departed out of a house, she may go and be another man's wife. So there's three things here. First of all, it is possible for a divorce to take place. The second thing is that when she is divorced, that frees her to marry legally again. And thirdly, if she goes back to marry a previous husband, that is an abomination in the eyes of the Lord. So marrying the same person twice is completely forbidden. Um, I want you to notice also in chapter 25 verse 1, it says, If there be a controversy between men and they come into judgment, that the judges may judge them, then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. The purpose of judgment, the purpose of judgment before men, is that the righteous may be justified and the wicked should be condemned. But I want you to notice something about this verse, is that this divides humanity into two groups. It divides humanity into those that do that which is right in the eyes of of the Lord. They're the righteous and they're to be justified. And those who do that which is wicked in the eyes of the Lord, they are to be condemned. They are the wicked. Um, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> the other thing is in verse, verse 9 it talks about um, when a man when a, when a man will not marry um, his brother's wife then she shall call for the elders of the city and they will take off his shoe and she will spit in his face and shall say, so shall it be done unto the man that will not build up his brother's house. And so we have the whole of the book of Ruth explained in a little verse like this. How fascinating. The scripture is all one book Anyway, I wish you every blessing and look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye for now.